today, we've got a couple back on the show who run an agency with over 150 employees, and they're going to be talking about a lot of topics, including brand story, A-plus content, chat GPT, and more. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Do you want to see how your listing or maybe competitors listing rates as to best practices for listing optimization? Or maybe you want to compare a group of ASINs or Amazon products to see how they compare to each other. Maybe you want to see within seconds the top keywords for a single listing or a group of listings. You can do that and more with the Helium 10 tool, Listing Analyzer. For more information, go to h10.me forward slash listing analyzer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's a completely BS-free, unscripted, and unrehearsed organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. Back for the third time with somebody different this time. We've got Saddam here from AMZ One Step on the show. Now, this is, like I said, his third time. Now, the very first time he was on the episode, uh, he came along with his sister, Leilama. And then the second time, he came on with his business partner, Kamal. And now, I was like, you know what? Let's try something different. Let's go ahead and bring you on with your wife slash employee, Teva here. So welcome, Saddam and Teva. Hi. Thank you for being here. Thanks again for having me for the third time. I keep switching partners, so <laughs> this one... He's talking about partner, you're like... <laughs> I was like, looking like what? Yeah. I keep switching. Let me that. Partner from a different aspect. You know? yes. First, yes. my partner, my family, of course, with my son business. Yeah. Uh, second was uh, the company partner and partner for life. Part oh, he saved himself on that one. Look at that romantic uh, gesture right there. All right. Well, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll notice I'm wearing my, what do you call this? This uh, fit here. What is this called? So this is a traditional Pakistani kameez shalwar uh, with a with a waistcoat. So, yeah, you're repping Thank Pakistan. You, yeah. I love it. I, I saw your Facebook story and I was like, is it somehow linked with our podcast episode? But yeah. thank yes. you. Again. So the reason, guys, this is actually the fit I had when I attended in Pakistan, in Peshawar, uh, Saddam and Tayyab's wedding. Let's go ahead and pull up some some footage here. Look at that. There we go. Here's the couple. And then me in the right, the back here, um, you know, for, for a company that, that specializes in photo studios, you could have told them, Hey guys, don't put some lights behind the, uh, the photo studio place here. You would think that, I don't know, like <laughs> you didn't have your team, uh, set this up, but still the, the picture came out pretty good. Uh, it was a great wedding. So hold on. I have one more thing to uh, show here. Take a look at this guys. Here we go. Oh, look at this. Um, goodness. It's getting getting busy here. Look at Omama, his sister, and Leilama. Look at those moves. We see why she fell in love with this gentleman here. Look at this. This is a photography by Bradley here. This love was it. a anyway. Of course, you know, I was put under the pressure. <laughs> but anyways, we're not here to talk about, you know, weddings and all, all that stuff. Uh, you know, we obviously could because that was that was such a cool, a cool one here. But but um, I'm bringing you on because, you know, you guys both have different uh, expertises. Now, Saddam, you know, we've been through your 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 backstory, you know, before, but maybe just a little bit since Taiba, this is your first time on the show. Were you born and raised in Canada or Pakistan? I would say, so I was born in Pakistan uh, and I came to Canada when I was about eight. I'd say I was raised in Canada, in Toronto. Now, did you go to university uh, there in, in Toronto or? I did. I went to University of Guelph. I got a degree that had nothing to did, do with did, did you say Guelph? Guelph. Okay. Guelph. I was about to say like, wow, that's an amazing university name that I went to the <laughs> University of Wealth because that's just, what we, okay, Guelph. Okay. Uh, and what, what was your, um, what, what were you studying there? Yeah, I was uh, studying biomedical engineering is what I did. Good yeah. grief. Okay. It sounds so far off, right? Like how did somebody go from biomedical engineering to marketing and creative leading? Uh, but I think anybody who knows me as a person um, would understand. I've always been a very creative person. So that transition just made sense. Out of curiosity, like after you got married, like, or even before you got married, was it like determined, hey maybe you should, you know, come help with the family business, I guess you can almost call it or, or, you know, cause you're there now, obviously, and I, I know you're, you're playing a role and we're, we're going to, we're going to talk about that today, but, 
But w- where did that come up in the discussions? Because I think I think that's always a thing when when I invite married couples on the show is like, so, so uh, you know who who are in business together. It's always a thing like, oh, is this going to work out? Or so when did you guys? How did you guys come to the conclusion? Hey, uh, why don't you help out with the business? I think some uh, recruiting attempts were made before. Could you admit to that? A little bit before we got married. Um, he isn't. It's a creative uh, agency, right? So. I think maybe he saw something. Uh, at that point, I wasn't really considering switching fields entirely and committing to it. Um, after we got married, though, uh, there was this convenient position open for a creative lead. It wasn't even called that at the time. Uh, they just basically were really, I think, busy and backlogged. And uh, at the time, it seemed like a perfect fit. So it basically the job description was product research and uh, analysis of, you know, like the market and coming up with a visual plan of what uh, these, those seven images would look like for a client. So they needed somebody to basically create like that creative foundation for the photographer, videographer, and the designers. And uh, that was something product research is something that I had experience in. Uh, just any time really that I think I got through my in- engineering degree was we had semester long uh, design work projects. And so that required a lot of research in the initial phases, iterations. Um, you obviously had to market the product to a certain degree. Um, so I enjoyed all of those aspects and it made sense to me. Um, but really, I was drawn to I had knew nothing about the Amazon space. And really, I was just drawn to this idea of cre- creative direction and selling a product in seven images. What's the best way to do that? How is everybody doing that? And how can we do it better and differently? And everything been cool so far? Uh, having your uh, husband as also your boss, too? Yeah, a little bit. We work. Uh, I think if somebody asks how it works, we work pretty like you're not really involved in um, my team. Yeah, at all, yeah, I no. would say. Yeah. Now, now she manages that team, yeah. and uh, yeah, there's layers. So we have the head of ops, who's kind of like her manager. So mm-hmm. uh, I tend to take this, the you know s- step back and. Yeah, but it was amazing because I had an Amazon expert basically at my fingertips. I could get into the Amazon space, so it was a huge uh, benefit to have. Now, Saddam, you know, speaking of the company, um, you know, you, you guys acquired another agency last year. Like how many, you know, worldwide, how many employees are, are you up to now? So I've been saying 150 and then my HR person reached out to me mm-hmm. saying, correct yourself. It's uh, 175 ish. So that's where we are. Uh, I think we are. Uh, there's still so much growth happening uh, since Q4. <laughs> like we've just been playing catch up with, with the new acquisition and just the uptick from Q4. So. I believe by end of the summer, we should be around 200. The last time you were on the podcast, I would say is probably early 2022 or something. But in the last year, like what are some big changes that you've seen? They don't have to be negative. You know, like maybe it's positive. Like maybe it's the addition of, for example, search query performance, you know, wasn't even a thing, you know, the last time you were on the, the podcast. And, and there's a lot of things in Amazon advertising that has been added. On the flip side, there's been some inventory issues, you know, like like bidding for inventory placement and, and trying to maximize your space that, that Amazon made a, a, a big change on. But like, what are some of these changes that, that you've seen that, you know, are affecting a lot of your customers in a positive or, or negative way? What we've been noticing is Amazon, I think, has finally realized that their interaction with the customers on the platform was very transactional. You know, customers would come on the platform, search for the product, check out, and that's it, right? Now, what they're trying to do is give a voice, a platform to the brand so that they can speak about some of their uh, uniqueness, some of their values, uh, and really harness a community. And what I mean by that is you look at brand registry. You know, you talked about brand analytics, uh, just a few features added to that. Brand story was a really good one that got added. Uh, A plus premium content. Uh, Amazon Post is now slowly getting that momentum. Uh, Sustainability badges. You know, there's small business badges. So all these things, what they speak about is the landscape now is promoting a lot more diversity in terms of brand. So now you don't just have those high reputation brands and then the other brands are pretty much like products. Now they're giving them a a place to to voice what they represent. Um, And I think it's it's heading in a really good direction where uh, there's gonna be a lot more engagement within the platform with customers engaging with the brands. Okay, let, let's talk about one of those things, you know, that you mentioned brand story, because that's the one that I'm probably least experienced with. I'm, I'm not sure, but I think I'm, I don't even know if I have brand story set up. But what's the difference between brand story and A plus content? Because you mentioned uh, both of those things. So uh, e- either of you can, can answer that. 
Yeah, yeah. okay, I, I can take that one. So brand story is, it comes under the, from the brand section, so you do need to be brand registered for it. And think of it like a mini storefront within your product page. Uh, so there's two purposes it has. First one is people now know that it's a China factory in China that it's a cookie cutter method, right? People are just sourcing from China and putting it on Amazon. They want to hear more from who the founders are, what the company represents. So within the brand story, when you see the start, you see a carousel display and people usually talk about either the brand itself, the mission or core values, or they have like a face to the brand. So who's behind that? Who's the founder? What do they represent? Who do they speak to? Who's their community? So that way there's a lot more engagement from customers and then just educating them about some of the other products within that category. So as I mentioned, it's like a mini storefront where you have you know, carousel display with hyperlinks and people can click on different products and they can shop around from your brand. They're not just restricted to just a product listing. So if you can get traffic to your listing, there's a really good opportunity there to do some cross-selling and upselling. So then the brand story, but isn't, isn't there, there's a part of the listing itself that has a brand story? Like, isn't it above the A plus content or I'm thinking of something different maybe? It is, yeah. Yeah, so from the brand would typically appear above the product description. Okay. And as I mentioned, um, on desktop, it's, uh, it's more, I guess, for mobile, it's optimized more for mobile where you have the carousel display and we know carousels work really well just by looking at Instagram and LinkedIn, right? So basically it would appear from the brand. It's like a, a sideway display. It's like a slider. And uh, from the examples that we've seen and that we've done with the clients, we mostly either focus on the face behind the the organization or the company values. And then it goes straight into a few products, like the top products within each category. Okay. Now where, where do I, I'm just like at a loss here of where to find this. You said it's under brand, like, uh, hold on, let me share my screen here. But like, wh where do I go even to find, to find this? This is on, I'm under the brand page here. Oh, right. Okay. So, and, and you don't have that on your listing yet, right? I don't Sorry. think so. Like, like, unless, you know, a lot of people are in these, these accounts, um, but it could be that. I'm not. So like, is it like, I know where the A plus content manager is yeah, and then here's brands. Okay. So go to A plus content manager. Okay. I was probably in the wrong place then. All right. Okay. So I hit start creating A plus. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. So you see brand story. There now uh -huh. there's going to be an additional option that would show up for some people that have access to premium A plus content. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, we can talk about the eligibility in, in a second, but this is where you start creating that brand story. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Good. Well, you see, like I, there's stuff that I, I probably, so much, so much stuff that I should be doing on my own accounts, but you know, since I only have like an hour to spend a week, I haven't done it as much now. Uh, yeah. I'm definitely going to, going to look into that um, more. So is that kind of like, do you, uh, when you guys offer that service, do you offer it separate or it's always like part of the package of creating your A plus content and this, like, do you suggest always doing both or is there a, or is there a, a case where you would just say, Hey, you know, somebody should just go with the brand story or somebody should just go with A plus content. Yeah. Really good question. Usually we do it separate because you just need one brand story either per the, the entire storefront or per category. You know, ah, okay. so, so it populates to your other products in that, in that, uh, brand then. Exactly. And that one brand story can just go on all your listings essentially. Okay. All right. Good to know. All right. Now, Taya, but before you fall asleep over there, uh, let, let's switch to you, you know, speaking of a plus content, you know, we actually gave, uh, AMZ one step, a, a project, and we're going to make a blog on it, um, later on, but you, we had a project under or a product under project uh, 5k that people know about on the podcast. It was like a kind of like a charcuterie car. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Charcuterie board. Um, and, and we wanted to kind of like highlight how we would use, uh, your studio in, in China, because that's, that's a lot of thing that people's, uh, pe people's, I can't even see, I can't even speak English these days, uh, that people out there, you know, have always worried about like, oh, okay, Hey, I'm making my product in China. But, you know, I live in Canada, I live in the United States and then, man, you know, to have to produce one right away and then like airship it all the way to AMZ One Step in Canada or my XYZ, uh, you know, um, photo studio in the U.S. 
and then you know pay somebody fifty dollars an hour to you know to to do it like it's, it's going to be expensive and you know too expensive and things like that and then it's going to take forever and make it lost in customs but it's like hey if you're producing your your product in china you want to you know get some fast turnaround so you can work on your listing why not use a photo studio where they just send it in one day probably cost like ten dollars to to send and so we're like hey let, let's try the amz one step studio and then let's use this opportunity since this was already a product we didn't need necessarily new images but you know what let's refresh the images and uh let's make some a plus content so what was um i believe that was given to your your team to do so like how did you what was your mindset like in tackling it when you looked at the listing and then you're like all right this is the kind of direction we should go because whether somebody uses you guys or not I think uh, whatever your mindset was is probably you know best practice. So go ahead. It initially starts with just project research. Uh, so you're, we wanted to basically look at what features are being highlighted. There was about a few images. There wasn't seven from what I remember. This was quite a while ago. But uh, one of the biggest things was uh, this was an, not just a regular charcuterie board. This was an extra large, uh, something like 30 inches across. So uh, already that's niche, right? Charcuterie boards people use um, in a social setting. And if something was extra large, uh, it would be used to, um, let's say, in birthday parties or any hosting event where you're serving more than a few people. So the biggest thing was for lifestyle. We already knew that we wanted to showcase that somehow, a hosting social setting. Uh, and when we looked at the competitors and did the competitor analysis, uh, what we found was there were so many complaints about sizing, whether it Basically, it seemed to me that there was miscommunication. They either were expecting it to be one size and it just wasn't. So we knew that we had to communicate the size of this effectively, uh, which immediately meant you guys had a model in the, um, the project. And so what we did was we got pictures of the model to hold up the board. And you had a visual reference of how tall an average woman would be versus the dimensions listed, because that alone uh, just let's say a white background shoot that you would have done uh, wouldn't have been enough because people can't visualize 30 inches across, right? So that was one approach that we had. Another um, complaint that we found when we did the competitor analysis was quality was something that was a huge complaint. People were complaining about warping um, as well as it just not uh, being up to par. And so because this was something that was 100% natural bamboo, we really wanted to emphasize that. Uh, and so we dedicated an entire slide just showcasing the quality, where it was made from, and emphasizing that this really was a high quality product. Yeah, I, I think for the most part, uh, what I looked at in the project was the focus was more. So the way we approach these projects now, uh, Bradley, is we uh, centered around less text and more visual, uh, you know, aspect of it. So whether it was calling out sustainability or the dimensions or any of the other ones, I know it's it was a while back. Mm -hmm. We just focus it more on how to communicate that message visually, as opposed to just putting so much text. And you mentioned A plus content. The previous A plus content, not the premium one, was so bad because when you're going on mobile, there's so much text just cluttered mm -hmm. and it just creates a really bad shopping experience for, for people. Yeah. Let me because show some not, pictures. I can actually show um, some that you guys did here just to give people an idea of the A-plus content. And now, the first thing that people notice is like, wait a minute. I thought you just said this was in, in your Chinese uh, photo studio. This person does not look uh, uh, Chinese. Um, so, like, you have, like, Western-looking models, I guess, if people, re re you know, re require that. We do. And uh, we always make a mention of that uh, whenever we jump on calls. I know people get uneasy asking me that question because I'm not <laughs> I'm not Western or, you know, I'm not Caucasian. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm like, by the way, before you have any doubts, I know this is a question, an elephant in the room. The models that we have in China or Bali, they're all Caucasian or at least we can get models from different demographics depending on like I, I maybe i want an african-american looking uh, individual maybe i want you know somebody that looks european or you know you might not have every single nationality represented but enough that that usually somebody you know you, you, people would get what you know the, the vibe that they're looking for right yeah and like beauty and skincare category sometimes we get multiple models mm -hmm. uh i know we om often get like weird requests you know we want a model without teeth because it's a dental product so then we have to like reach out to agencies, but we can always find a model that's mm -hmm. never been an issue. Oh, well, what else about the, um, when you, when you just in general, um, let's say somebody is already has a plus content 
and they just want to update it um, or, or refresh it? Like, are you looking at their, the reviews? Are you looking at their conversion rate or, or how do you decide how to tackle? Cause you know, this is like, it's kind of a big project, you know, like to do a full photo shoot, like just looking at these images, I was like, this is not something that, Oh, let's just, you know, snap some pictures here in, in an hour. I mean, it takes planning. It takes, you know, renting of a space, you know, potentially. So you got to kind of get it right. So like, how do you, how do you optimize or what kind of things are you, are you thinking of that you haven't mentioned um, already? So whenever we look at a plus contents that are already existing, we everything has to be purpose driven. We, we don't just do it because, you know, the listing, it doesn't look pretty and we want to give it like a, a revamp. So we look at, start with the images. And then if there's a video there, are all the features covered? Have we done a good job with covering everything that needs to be communicated to the buyer? If not, what are some of those components? Maybe it's like extra details. Uh, usually we find this with tech products. There's so much information that sometimes it's it's all a good it's preferred not to put them in images and then use A plus content for that matter. Uh, second thing is we look at the Q and A section. And that's where the burning questions come up. And we're, again, with A plus premium content, which maybe we'll discuss in a bit, there's now an FAQ model or a Q&A module that we can uh, leverage. But those burning questions also need to be answered. And then it all comes down to, do we have more products? Are, is there more in our product line that we need to talk about? If yes, this is an excellent cross-setting opportunity we can create like a comparison chart where people get educated. Maybe this is not the right headphone for you, but we have something else that has a better noise cancellation function. So it's stuff like these. And as I mentioned, you know, the whole platform is evolving to create brand communities. So any opportunity we get to talk about the brand and if, you know, the brand itself wants to talk about it and it's not highlighted in the A plus content section, we'll make a mention of that. Back to the brand story, you know, now, now that we kind of got the A plus content, what if there's a case where there's not really a, you know, some, some cool story about the founders of the company, or maybe I just want to stay incognito, you know, like I don't want to, you know, put that front and center. Like how would, would you only use brand story to, to, to highlight, you know, some, some, some cool thing about the owners or about the, their message or about their, you know, brand purpose or something, or is there something else that, that you that would go in that section so as not to waste it. Okay, I'll I'll tell you a really good story. Okay, so last year I was looking for a supplement company because I didn't want to go out and shop for it, and I came across My Protein. I love the brand. I still uh, order all my supplements from there, and as I was shopping from there, their prices was were really good. Their product mix was re really good. But then I landed on their sustainability page where they talked about reducing their carbon footprint. Uh, in the in the world mm -hmm. and even though i'm not crazy about sustainability what that showed me is they care and they listen to their customers and they made an effort to solve that issue for them right so if you don't have a face if you don't have anything extraordinary in your story what do you represent what are some of the core values that are important to you because only then can you connect with your customers mm -hmm. are you are you a gen z that's you know uh, that wants to have like a sustainable product line? If yes, talk about that in your brand story. So whatever is important to you ultimately becomes important to your customers. And you just want to speak about that. And this is the perfect placement to talk about some of those things. As far as in the work sense, what are how are you using uh, either chat GPT, mid journey or, or anything like that? Sure. I can start with mid journey. So, uh, that is because it's probably the least uh, hopeful looking right now. It's really, if you, we've tried uh, a few AI image, uh, generation websites and none of them have really proved to be kind of, um, effective in getting that workout. It's actually just easier to do the image plan and get the photographer to shoot it. You'll get an accurate, uh, image that you want. But when it comes to ChatGPT, it's a very powerful tool. So we use it to do a lot of our automation is what we're finding that it helps with. Um, will it do the product research for you? Absolutely not. You're still going to need those Helium 10 tools. You're still going to need X-Ray. You're still going to be using Cerebro to find those keywords. And you're still going to be, it's very powerful to use the image um, analyzer, right? The listing analyzer. And so what you can do is you can use those tools to feed it information. And the output that it will give you will be entirely based on the information that you feed it. And uh, so when you when it conducts 
product research. The product research that it can conduct is those review insights that you're giving it, and it can very quickly analyze 1,000 reviews, something that would take a human being so much time to do, to look through all of those reviews, figure out the patterns, what are the pain points, what are the benefits, how are customers using this? Instead, you can just use a Helium 10 tool, upload that listing, ask it a bunch of questions uh, that would be relevant uh, to your product research, and it can do that for you within a matter of seconds. Saddam, how about you? Um you have any other use cases for AI in the company you can t uh, talk about? Yeah, I think we used uh, Stock M. We used Pebbly Pe or Peblily. Peblily or something. Mm -hmm. uh, we used Midjourney. Uh, Teva is right for the most part. You know, we tried giving it prompts, but the text to visual uh, prompts, they're still trying to figure it out. So if you say that I want like an image of maybe an office product with office supplies, it's going to create some random weird looking pens and pencils. So yeah. it's getting there. You know, it's a, it's really exciting to see that, you know, the, the, all the stuff that you can do with it, but it's not there yet. And right now we're just kind of leading a department so that we're ahead of the curve and we know what's going on in that world. Uh, with the content. Yes. We've seen that, you know, mm -hmm. where we've done a lot of automation. So where previously uh, a lot of the time it would take, maybe four or five hours of just research. Now it's shortened that to half an hour, one hour, uh, just because we can just feed it that. And I'm still, I haven't tried out the new uh, tool from Helium 10. I think you guys just came out with one. So maybe that's like connected yeah. somehow with uh, all the backend stuff. Are there any image AIs out there where you can take like, like a, a, a picture of an actual product and then do what people, you know, do now is like Photoshop it into lifestyle images or even create lifestyle images from scratch, or it's still too like random. Like it has to be completely generic. Can you like say, Hey, here's a picture of, of this water bottle, you know, um, show it on, you know, in a picture of, of a woman age 35 inside of a kitchen preparing their kids meal or just some random thing. Like, is there anything that will then put it in her hands or anything like that? Or you don't know of any, Anything like that, that. So of the ones that we've tried, there's stock image or stock stock IMG. And that one, basically the premise of it is that you can give it an AI prompt and it will um, generate a stock image for you. Now, it's really not the best when it comes to lifestyle, including models, models and hands. I think AI is notorious for being awful at generating accurate hands. And it, God forbid you ask it to hold something. It would be 12 fingers, um, but even the simpler ones, right? Like let's say infographics is what we started off with. What if we do an amazing sh uh, shot of this water bottle in a mountain ocean scene, right? Even that with um, with uh, a website like Pebbly, Pebblily, uh, it's it's still a bit struggle uh, of a struggle to get that uh, done effectively and get it done to the level and the extent that our graphic designers would be able to do it. And we'll we'll send you that name because we're struggling with it, but it's yeah. a good one to start with. So if yeah. your product comes under the beauty category, skincare, supplements, hey, you can bust out like five six good images with that. Yeah, yeah, because what it'll it'll do is. Take a picture of the product. It will cut it out, put it on like a the, remove the background, and then you can give it prompts like let's say, um, you know, place it on a kitchen counter with the uh, flat laid uh, with so, let's say if it's a supplement for mm -hmm. turmeric, you can put you know ar around turmeric or ginger, and it will create something really nice for you. But uh, again, with models, it kind of struggles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, who knows? Maybe, maybe the technology will go there one day, but maybe just in general, we, we talked about some specific uh, strategies, which I think is important, but you know, we're in 2023, as we mentioned, things change every year. Um, your guys, while you are A to Z, your specialty is definitely talking about creatives, um, and, you know, be it, be it images, be it videos, uh, et cetera. What should, uh, you know, top two or top three things that that sellers should be looking at when they're thinking about, all right, this is going to be my strategy for, um, for, for my creatives for the next year or so? If it's the top two approaches, right? So first of all, we talked about it, harnessing a community. Think of your brand as a person. What kind of voice does it need to have? And then your whole creatives approach should be around that in order to speak to your desired customer, okay? So take advantage of showcasing yourself as a brand as opposed to a product. 
that that's a, an outdated strategy. You're not going to have much chance of success. And then the other thing is, don't treat your creatives as just a one-time task. Once you create it, once you have images ready, once you have title ready, that's half the job. Split testing and optimize. You got to keep going back to the drawing board. Uh, use Helium 10's uh, audience. Split test your main image. Split test your title. Uh, do it on Amazon as well with Manage My Experiments because you need to understand your opinion and my opinion can vary uh, drastically, right? Because creatives is very subjective. But that does not mean that the market has to agree with either of our opinions. It has to come from data. So everything that you need to do has to be consciously driven by data. Uh, so one approach that we have when we are deciding about how to showcase a feature in an image is, like you said, like you mentioned before, nobody is reading text anymore. And so the more that you can reduce text, the better. And how you want to convey the feature has to be seen immediately when you look at the image. If I were to cover all of the text, am I being sold on that feature? Does it make, still make sense to me? Is my still getting that message? And if those answers are yes, then you're on the right track for sure. All right, this has been great information. Um, uh, you know, it's it's been fun hanging out with you guys at you know all the way from your wedding now uh, at the sell and scale prosper prosper shows. We, there's a video that came out, all of us dan dancing on the dance floor a little bit in the Helium Ten Instagram story yesterday. I don't know if you uh, I don't know if you saw that, uh, but um, maybe there's a chance for us to hang out again in the future. Hopefully, I've been trying to convince uh, Saddam and Deyaba to go to the uh, Bali Mastermind. So I'm going to this mastermind. It's not by Helium 10, but I'm, I'm attending there and I'm speaking there. Um, it's in June. I think it's June 18th to 22nd. So there's a chance that you can meet uh, this dynamic duo in person as well. But if you guys want more information, uh, a link to go to that event is at h10.me forward slash Bali. h10.me forward slash Bali. So Saddam, and I'm putting you on the spot in there. Can I, can I see you? Can, can we party again? And can you show me those dance moves from your wedding that we were looking at um, in person again? We would love to, you know, any chance. We fell in love with Bali last yeah. year. And uh, because with Kenji's team, I, I think we'll be going there this year for sure, mm -hmm. right? We just haven't nailed down the dates, but uh, that's in the plans. I know you mentioned it once and I'm, I'm really interested. Yeah. Um, we just have like a, a new villa there too now. So I'd love to kind of visit that. But yeah, for sure. If we're going, we'll hang out at our villa. We'll party there. I'll show you some dance moves. How about Let's that? do it. Let's do it. We'll bring the whole crew back. Uh, I think your sisters might be upset if you if you don't take them to uh, to Bali again. Leilam and uh, Omar were definitely interested in going too. So I'll put in a good word for them. All right, now now it's the time of the show where we always ask our guests for like a, a our our thirty second tip or sixty second tip, something that's actionable for our users. Table, we'll start with you. Sure. Uh, so if anybody and everybody who is not using ChatGPT should definitely be using ChatGPT. But the thing about ChatGPT is you have to treat it like it is the smartest uh, child in the world. And so anytime you're asking a question, you need to understand what you're not asking it. And a great follow up uh, prompt that you can give ChatGPT is uh, what assumptions were made here and and or you can ask it uh, what questions am I not asking that I should be asking and you will get a plethora of information that might have completely gone over your head. If you're like Bradley because we saw his screen share and you don't have access to A plus premium content the eligibility criteria we know uh, brand registry you have to have brand story on all ASINs and then 15 brand uh, A plus content applications approved. The trick is you don't need 15 A plus contents on different 15 different listings. You can just create iterations of the same A plus content and do it for just that one listing if you have just one product and you'll be eligible for A plus premium content. Awesome, awesome, excellent tips. Thank you so much. Now, how can people reach out uh, to you guys, whether you know it's for to, to help with fo uh, photo studio stuff or, or listing optimization? Remember, guys, you know, like I, I don't recommend people I don't use myself, and and for multiple accounts, I've used AMZ Step. AMZ one step over the last couple of years. So I highly recommend them. How can they find you guys on the interwebs? Yeah, or, or by the way, they might ask you for wedding planning uh, um, and, and dance choreography uh, advice as well. So, so what's the contact information? <laughs> Sounds good. No. And thanks for uh, all the referrals and stuff. So um, our website, AMZ one step.com, or you can just send us an email at info at AMZ one step.com, or you can find us on any of the social media platforms, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, just AMZ One Step, and you'll be able to see that. Awesome, awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Happy belated 
one year anniversary and uh, hope to see you guys uh, sometime this year.